right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Let me get the camera going here. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to the Hill Hernando Baptist Church Midweek Worship and Bible Study. I am the humble under shepherd, Michael O. Miner. So glad that you have joined us on tonight. Uh, look, do like I'm doing now. Uh, go ahead and share uh, in your Facebook family. Uh, copy the link from YouTube. You can text it out to some people. Uh, we have a great Bible study uh, lined up for tonight. I want you all to come and be a part of what we're doing uh, on this evening. As you can see behind me, uh, we still are just thankful uh, for uh, our, our, uh, 26 years at the Hill. Uh, we're just so uh, just appreciative of the Hill Hernando family and friends who were just so gracious and 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 loving uh, to us this past Sunday. We're still celebrating, and we just thank God for what he has done, what he is doing, and we step out on faith and thank him in advance for what he's going to do for us in the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look, we do want to begin by giving a shout out to our ministerial staff, our associate pastors, Evangelist Beatrice Robinson, Minister Mary Bledsoe, uh, and then to our associate ministers, uh, Minister Willie Beatty and uh, Minister Johnson Salisbury. Of course, our very wonderful first uh, lady, Sister Lida Minor, all of us at the Hill. Cook, you can join us. We're back at our regular times now, 9.45 a.m., our Sunday School Overview, 10 a.m. worship uh, this Sunday. Uh, we are, uh, amen, we are in the midst of our youth uh, and young adult month, uh, amen, and uh, we have a great theme for the month, and we want to begin sharing a, a, a series of messages. Uh, our theme is uh, Grateful for God's Guidance, uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Uh, grateful for God's guidance. And we're going to begin with Joseph, the arrogant younger uh, brother. Uh, amen. So hopefully that you can join us. But look, again, no hit, now time to share. Let's get ready and uh, to get uh, going on tonight so we can be blessed of the Lord. All right. And we're going to go through our uh, call of worship. Amen. Um, the call of worship comes from Psalm 28, verses 8 and 9. Psalm 28, verse 8 and 9. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for allowing us to come uh, here in this virtual space to share on this evening. We pray, Lord, that some unsaved so might be saved, and some saved so might be helped along the way. So let there be less of me, Michael O. Minor, and more of thee, Jesus the Christ, and will be forever careful, give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Again, uh, uh, just to say a couple more things of, of uh, thanks from this past Sunday. Uh, Pastor Marcus Powers really blessed us uh, in, with the message. Um, uh, the um, committee to the next job, everybody was on the uh, program the food afterwards, uh, the donations, the texts, uh, the post on Facebook, and go on and on and on and on. It's been a, a, a trying past year for Sister Maya and I with our uh, health challenges with us uh, personally and our family, uh, but we're just so thankful that God has blessed us for another year. Uh, 26, so we're in our 27, so we're just going to keep going on higher and higher in the Lord, so thank you so much. And then we're excited. Oh, what a busy Sunday coming up at the Hill. The second Sunday in June is our homecoming Sunday. Uh, we're celebrating uh, a bunch of things. We're just reminiscing about the history of our, our church family that dates back to 1879. Then our Memphis Street camp, campus, uh, seven years that we've been there. Uh, and what the Lord has done, our families uh, that are there, that are tied to us. And uh, we're just going to reminisce a little bit and just be thankful as we do on our homecoming Sunday, homecoming on the hill on Sunday. At the same time, we're also going to recognize our graduates, uh, graduate recognition Sunday, and how the Lord has blessed them and want to encourage them on the way. And finally, we want to recognize our academic achievement. So certainly we hope that everybody has given names uh, to Sister Jefferson and so that she can uh, make sure that we get uh, some the appropriate recognition for them but we do want to encourage all of our, our young folks because education is important. Uh, amen. It helps us along the way. Uh, and, and look for me with who've had to experience a number of health challenges. 
I'm so thankful I can use my brain now and not my brawn because if we were up to my brawn, I'd be in a world, world of hurt. So we're looking forward to that on Sunday. Homecoming and graduate recognition, academic achievement Sunday uh, at the Hill. Of course, this is also um, uh, Men's Health Month. And so we're encouraging all our men to do the right thing. Yes, check on your health so you can be around a little while uh, longer. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Uh, amen. Of course, you know, I always got to say something about our health insurance, don't you? Uh, amen. I always want to keep Sister Jefferson uh, happy. Uh, need health insurance for you and your family? Yes. Uh, whether it's for your children with Medicaid or the Children's Health Insurance Program, CHIP. Uh, for other family members, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, or connecting with the Federal Qualified Community Health Center. We know we're so thankful for our assurance, but we want to make sure we got insurance. Well, give us a call, 662-298-3584, 662-298-3584. Be more than happy to assist you uh, with that. Also, I'll give the National Baptist Convention, the All of Us Research Program, uh, be one in a million for a better future. You can go to joinallofus.org forward slash NBCUSA. Joinallofus.org forward slash NBCUSA. And when you get there, you'll see a picture of Sister Mine and I. Uh, we are excited about that uh, because um, uh, for the National Baptist, we're hoping that one day through this research, we'll be able to find a cure for sickle cell. And then as soon as this uh, Bible study is over tonight at 730, you can join us uh, on this uh, National Baptist Convention Facebook page for our Temple Care Matters. Our Tuesday, our first Tuesday uh, session. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about health, knowledge, and legacy. So tonight, uh, 7.30, just go to the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated uh, Facebook page, and we'll learn more. But I also have some updates about the um, uh, COVID. Uh, COVID-19. I know everybody, everybody is thinking that uh, COVID is done for, that it's over, that we can just say, hey, don't worry about it anyway. But there's still some things that we're going to have to um, be aware of that we want to talk about. And so we certainly hope that you will join uh, us tonight as we uh, share some things uh, about that as well. Okay. And I want to show this picture from way back in 2019. Uh, all right, VBS, Vacation Bible School. Uh, we won't be as nearly as, as tight and close as this picture is, but we're planning some, uh, some uh, we're keeping in mind with the, the, on the COVID-19 endemic, but we're going to get some, um, some outdoor activities we're going to set up on June 28th, 29th, and 30th. Uh, we're looking to do day and uh, day, uh, day session. So uh, give us a call, 662-298-3584. Uh, It'll be in combination with the uh, the Hill Hernando and Mid-South Churches uh, in getting that done. We certainly hope that uh, uh, you'll call and inquire, get your children out, uh, amen, so they can be blessed of the Lord. All right, and of course, if you need any prayer requests, um, uh, call us at the church, 662-362-8877. 662-362-8877. Uh, we'd be more than happy uh, to bless you. Uh, uh, and then just a real heads up, you know, after the third Sunday in July, it's going to be the Hamilton Hill Congress, the 19th, 20th, and 21st. We'll share more information as we get closer to that time. All right. Okay, everybody. Let's get ready for our Bible study. Thank you. And Sister Jefferson, I hope I was on point with our uh, updates. All right. Uh, we've been studying the first Thessalonians chapter uh, five, and we did up with this whole idea of encouragement. We all need to be encouraged, y'all. There's so many uh, uh, crazy things happening with all the shootings. And, and you know, the sad part, I just say this about it. The sad part, folks know that if you don't allow 18 year olds to buy alcohol or cigarettes, it just doesn't make much sense for them to be able to buy a, a man and um, one of these uh, AR-15s, these uh, automatic rifles. It just doesn't make sense. But it's all because of people want to be in power and not using uh, common sense. And sadly, 
there are many in the church, many of my fellow um, um, gospel preachers who are promoting this type of thing. And let me just say, as, as, as growing up and hunting, uh, we'd have a, a rifle or a shotgun. There was no need to hunt with an automatic weapon. Uh, it was bad enough that every now and then if you uh, shot a rabbit and you might have a, a, you know, a little lead or something in it, you know, but can you imagine if you shot something up with one of those, uh, it just, it's only used for killing people. And then I will add this other part to it is that it used to be, we might get into a fist fight with somebody or, or at the worst or raise our voices. But now instead of selling it that way, uh, everybody go jumps and gets, and gets a gun. And so where in the past people would get arguments and, uh, and go at each other and be friends afterwards, now they kill each other. So we're just uh, saying we've got to be prayerful and just have to just wait on the Lord. The Lord has his, his own time for these things. And the one thing I want everybody to do, we just can't be so too afraid to live that literally we have just died. Amen. Even though we get alive and breathing, we're so scared and afraid about uh, our surroundings and where we are, we can't even live. All right. So 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 5, we've been dealing with uh, uh, these things about encouragement. Uh, we uh, are now uh, down to uh, verse number 21. And verse 20, 21 is a reference to verse 19 and 20, which began by do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies. Uh, verse 21 says from the New King James Version, test all things, hold fast what is good. And we want to start with the first part about test all things, which, you know, uh, some translations have that examine, which means to talk about testing, proving, and, and really the, the, the basis of this word is how you test metals. And to determine uh, the durability of a metal is tested by fire. So this examination, that's some cursory thing that we run through quickly but we really have to just take some time and, and let it go through. It's kind of the idea of how the cow uh, chews its cud, that, uh, that it eats the grass, then it regurgitates from the stomach, then it comes back and chews it again. That we need to look at things that uh, at the time that Paul was writing this, that some were concerned about some of the false teachers coming through. And Paul was telling them really to take time to examine what people are saying. Well, we're in that same boat now that we need to make sure that people are preaching uh, the what thus says the Lord and not their own thing, okay? And the only way that we can, uh, but, but the only thing that we can do here is understand that we need to know something about the word for ourselves. Sadly, we have so many folks who rely on uh, the preachers they see on Sunday morning and listen to every word they say. There's many folks who can quote what they're, uh, the preacher is saying in the preacher's word, but can't quote the Bible. See, it's a, it's a both and. So it's a both and, and that you need to be able to uh, uh, listen to the word on Sunday, but you need to have your Bible out. You need to be reading the Bible on your own. You need to know the word. You need to be making the Bible reading a part of your daily activities, your daily life, the thing that you're doing. And then every now and then, you know, your, your, your pastor, your preacher, your minister, those people that you're listening to are going to have some things that are not quite right. And, and, and that's fine. We're human. But if you are there reading the word, you can then uh, contact them. Don't put them on blast and let them know something you don't understand that you have a question about. But you got, it's like trying to watch football and you don't know the rules. You're just seeing a bunch of thought. You have no idea what's going on. When you are in a preaching or a teaching environment like we are now, have your Bible out. Read, the, read it for yourself and have an understanding of it. Uh, amen. So we all can be in this thing together. Okay. All right. So what, what John, uh, what, uh, what, the, what Paul is saying here is that we should, he, the things that he's saying in this, we should put it all to this, to, to, to the test. But we don't put the test on our own understanding. It's about spiritual discernment that we do it as we let the indwelling power and presence of the Holy Spirit guide us. 
And when we have the spiritual discernments, we have the ability to distinguish divine truth, that from God, from error and half truth. Uh, we can look at right from wrong or, or good from bad. And we, when we do that, it gives us the ability to live a, a healthy Christian life. We need to test everything to see if it's the real thing, to see if it's really Christianity, okay? Um, and, and, the, and, the, and the context of this word, this Greek, Greek word that's translated um, um, examine or test is the idea that it is something that not should be done every now and then uh, on, on um, the exception, but it should be a regular practice. We should look at everything that's being said and make sure it's right. <sighs> All right, look at people's motives, why they're saying things. All right, so for an example, there are some people uh, that are pushing, that have been pushing this whole thing about um, uh, Roe versus Wade and 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 uh, getting that overturned. They don't. They're not doing it from a religious standpoint. They're not doing it because they value life. They're doing it because they want to get elected. They want to do it because they're being popular. You, you know the reason why I know it's not really based, really based upon Christian principles, because if it were, uh, states like Mississippi would have expanded um, the uh, the the care for women who have um, new mothers. Instead of giving them sixty days of coverage under Medicaid, they would give them a whole year. People don't realize sixty percent of the babies born, 60% uh, of the births in Mississippi are under Medicaid, 60%. Amen. And let me just be frank, not all those people are Black. And not all those people are not working. There are a lot of working poor in Mississippi, lots of them work a job 40 hours a week, amen, and but they still qualify for Medicaid. And they're on this thing. So if we're talking about the sanctity of life and, and, and it, starts at, it starts at inception, it also means it doesn't stop at birth. So, all right, if life starts at inception, then when, it, when the child is born, the baby is born, then we need to put the same amount of, you know, power and resources there. And, and Nick, you know, I'm gonna just say this, I'm gonna talk about adoption and on all these things. Mississippi, for example, is one of the worst foster care systems, the thing that there is. And then the other thing is, it's, it's a known fact that a lot of uh, uh, mothers, uh, expecting mothers, if they go down that path and don't have an abortion, decide that they want to have the baby. Uh, at the end of nine months, it's a different ball game. Uh, many of them would like to keep the baby after they've gone through that process and, and whatnot. So the thing that we need to do also is that that um, mother didn't get to be pregnant by herself. What about the father? What about the circumstances? There's so many uh, young women who have been victimized by older men in the church, uh, people in power, politicians, you know, teachers, you know, all kinds of things. So when we bring in and talk about life and we want to protect the sanctity of life, and, and I'm going to go say something here that's going to probably tick some folks off. Yes, lives matters. Black lives matter, white lives matter, all life matters. But the thing about it is that we, we can't look at just saying the word all lives matter. We have to look in the context of each uh, individual group. For example, uh, if you get pulled over, and I'm gonna get back to let's just say, if, if, if I get pulled over, it's gonna be a different lens as opposed to somebody my same age is white. So that's why I think I have no problem people saying Black Lives Matter. Because in general, uh, in a society, folks would think white lives matter. But when you say Black Lives Matter, that gives you an idea of thinking about what it is to be Black. Asian lives matter, with the, the number of attacks on Asian uh, um, uh, people of Asian descent the last few, just, just slapping them, shooting them, beating them up you know, for no reason. Uh, Jewish lives matter. Uh, the number of people have gone in and uh, done attacks uh, against Jewish synagogues. Um, uh, Taiwanese lives matter. Just had a, a shooting recently 
where somebody from uh, China was a, a, attacking because people from Taiwan. I think it's very important for us to put a group of people's name before lives matter so that we can focus and think about, put ourselves in those people's shoes. This comes back to this discernment process. So if I come back and say all lives matter, I'm just thinking about the general population in America. When I come back and say Taiwanese lives matter, I'm going to start thinking about what it means to be uh, somebody from Taiwan, that's a small island, and China says it's a, a runaway province. Uh, I, I, I want to think about what that is and not from where I am. There are power in the words when I put that phrase together. Uh, and another thing we have to remember, as America keeps moving, we're moving to a majority-minority country where there's nobody being the majority, and we all have to learn how to learn to love one another. But coming back to that thing about uh, this uh, testing or examining, um, it's it's about seeing if it's genuine. Uh -huh. it's, it's genuine. It's the real thing. You know, I always joke if it's a real diamond, it'll, it'll scratch glass. You know, it may look like it may look like a diamond. It uh, uh, you may it may feel like it or whatnot, but is it genuine? We have to um, we have to know uh, by doing giving it a test. And even, and even though it looks that way, uh, you know, we're amazed by uncertainty, but once we test it and find out, then we are sure. Uh, look, look, Paul, it's, it's not a surprise that Paul would put this uh, in toward the end of this <clears throat> First Thessalonians in his writing. Because look how he wrote in uh, Romans, uh, the Roman road. He really spent the first basic 11 chapters of Roman, uh, Romans laying out <clears throat> the what it is to be the uh, uh, that the relationship between uh, humankind and God, how human humankind was alienated, how Jesus' death uh, justified it, how once we were uh, accept Jesus as our Savior, we begin the sanctification process, and then when we die, we'll be we'll be glorified uh, there in heaven. And so Paul went through all of these things, all of these things. The truth. This was laid out the truth. Then he got to Romans twelve and two and talked about us not being conformed. Amen. So conform to the world. So the conform was saying that we didn't want us to become that we come to something that's not reflective of Christ. Okay, because Christ is what's put inside you. So one thing we can identify as Christ is love. So when we see Christians or folks who claim to be followers of Christ doing things or saying things that don't respect and show love, then that's not, that's not being conformed to Christ. Uh, amen. Amen. And then so this world, the world is a selfish. The belief system, the values, this being ruled by Satan. When it's about self, when selfish is coming, we know it's worldly. And there are many people that are so selfish, they want you to be like them. Think about the idea, um, amen, when, when, when Philip went there with the Ethiopian unit, the Ethiopian unit had a misunderstanding about the uh, suffering servant, uh, Jesus. Philip could have just said, man, you off the wall here. Come on, let me just start talking to you about Jesus. No. He started in the Old Testament where the Ethiopian was, and then he worked them up to an understanding of Jesus. And at that point, when the Ethiopian unit saw water, he wanted to be baptized. Uh, amen. So we have to meet people where they are, but we don't stay there. We move. I know I was so blessed, y'all. I was blessed this weekend on Saturday to be able to do the memorial service there at the uh, Memorial Church there at Harvard University. Uh, and just to hear when the service is over, so many people who said that there was some genuineness about me and what I said, and that some of them said, I'm not really much of a church going folks and I'm not really much into religion, but uh, you move me. Even people who are not quote unquote, hardcore go to church every Sunday people, when you are really showing yourself, as we said in the next part is Romans 12 and 2, and you're transformed, 
when you go from this metamorphosis from what you were, uh, a man, uh, then people can see the genuineness in who you are. In other words, they may not accept your belief or whatever, but they're going to respect you. And the problem with the church and too many folks that are preachers and teaching the church, we have lost the respect of the world. Jesus had the respect of many. Amen. They didn't believe what he said, but they respected him. Paul had the respect of many. They didn't believe what he said, but they respected him. But now we're getting to the point where people don't respect uh, the, the preachers, don't respect the teachers and, and the word, don't respect the church. Amen. Because we have not, we, have, we, we got away from this transformation and then we are not into this idea about renewing. And the renewing here of our minds is reprogramming. Our minds have been programmed by the, our worldliness, but our mind needs to be reprogrammed. Amen. Amen. So that the spirit comes and saturates our mind. The scripture can take control and then order our st steps. And guess what happens? Now look here now. Look here. That's a powerful thing. Romans 12 and 2. I know we've been in first sense longer, but I, this, this thing works here too. So look, look. So look here. But if we're not conformed to the world, but we're transformed, uh, by renewing, uh, reprogramming my mind, then we will prove, woo, prove, and prove is the same thing here as test or examine. It's the same Greek word that the will of God is that what is good, and acceptable, and perfect. When we do all these things, it's evidence that we're living changed lives. John MacArthur wrote here that it is a failure in the area of holding fast the faithful word that is largely responsible for the superficial, self-elevating preaching and teaching in many evangelical churches. In other words, we got people that are just saying, uh, preaching stuff that sound good. There's nothing really, there's no meat, it's all fluff. Uh, amen. And we can go a step further, is that to avoid being pulled into error, we must keep a firm grip on the truth. Amen. See, we are all kinds of um, Christianized literature. It, it has a, a taste of, of Christianity. It may have God in it. Uh, music, um, all these self-help books and stuff. They, they want to move away from, from Jesus and move towards uh, a, a being, a spirituality, you know, it used to be when you said religion, you thought about Christianity, but now religion can be some of anything all across the board of what it is. And you got to be careful when you're going and you're looking at stuff on the web or doing searches and you start getting to spirituality. Because when you get into spirituality, you're going to find yourself, if you're not careful, a long way from Christ. Uh, amen. <clears throat> so we, we have to be, be careful that uh, people will get up like the uh, Judaizers who came and said, okay, yes, well, we all believe in Jesus. He died and he rose, but you got to be uh, circumcised uh, uh, first. Uh, amen. And then you, you had the Gnostics who said, well, yeah, we believe in Jesus, but there's no way in the world that God would come down and be in human form. So he must have just uh, left as a spirit before getting on the cross. This whole thing of Gnosticism that we rely now to the Jehovah Witness. There are all kinds of movements that come. There's some that say that they have been the true church and they have been around since the beginning and don't realize that during the, uh, uh, up until the Middle Ages, there was only one church. It was, it was, it was the universal church, which is translated the, the Catholic church. That was the only church, the Pope, that, that was it. It wasn't until the, the Middle Ages that we started seeing the Protestant Reformation and the Methodist and the Lutheran and the Baptist and all these things. That's a fact. So we need to know these things. So everything um, that we, we read that uh, in the Bible, we pray and meditate and with the message that we are to examine it. Uh, so we, we, we have to, uh, to not to, to carefully examine everything that is coming for us for our belief. Not to just say that whatever words coming out of somebody's mouth is wrong, but 
we have to have a relationship with that, that person's ministry and, and recognize what they're sharing. Then read for ourselves. There's a reinforcement. We're not reading to try to find, aha, I knew he was lying. I knew she was lying. But it's a, an affirmation, all right? And, and, and so, so we are to come in. And at the time that Paul was teaching here in the Thessalonians, a lot of what was being taught was garbage. It wasn't true. People, every time they opened their mouth, they were lying. Uh, amen. And a lot of the stuff that we see on, the, on YouTube, on Facebook, on TV, it is uh, about people's opinions and, and doctrines and things they bring in to say it's all right. All right. But we have to have a, a reference and the reference is the word of God. Amen. Uh, so what, it, what it's saying is that we have to have a, a, uh, the, the word of God within us. The Holy Spirit will bring uh, what we read back to our remembrance so we can know what something's not quite right. And look for those of all that are those of you all that are, that are still new on the walk, and you're not uh, don't have all those scriptures. You have it. Just know when people come and doing something that ends up leading you not to love your fellow human being, that's not of the Lord, because Jesus commanded us that we need to love God and love our neighbor. Amen. And so uh, the the problem we have is that a lot of stuff sounds good. It sounds good. It sounds good. It sounds good, but it's not good at all. Okay. So all the stuff that comes in. Uh, remember back in the day when uh, when the, in the when they had the uh, they went out west and they thought they had found gold and it wasn't gold. They called it fool's gold and they, and everything. And they, they, sometimes they plant a few little nuggets. Uh, they would get people to buy a gold mine. So what they would do, they would find they would get some gold from somewhere else they were sprinkling around in the mine and comes oh here's some gold then the person would buy it and they found out that 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 was that was the only gold that was there so be careful the people give you a few nuggets that are truthful and based upon the word of god but then you come back in it the rest of it is garbage and kind of line things up and what they're doing don't don't fool yourself it's uh the religion is big money a lot of folks are not in it for saving souls they're in it for making out for themselves. So we'll make sure that we go and do and understand. So the idea of testing all things, remember, it's not being skeptical. It's not being skeptical. It's all past the matter. Let me just, every word he say, let me, but the idea is that if, when, when I'm teaching your part and your, your part of those that, that are well, formal members of the, of the, of the heel and those that, uh, that are thankful that watch us each week on our Bible study on Sunday morning, uh, you know my ministry, you know know my teaching, and you know I like to teach in a series so that we can follow along together, uh, that we can be up. And I, and I, and I, and I get the uh, feedback from folks who tell me how they hadn't seen, they hadn't thought of it this way, that how I take, you know, and go uh, verse by verse, sometime half verse by half verse, and really break it down. So because I got nothing to hide. I'm trying to reveal and share with you the unadulterated word of God and give you the context. Because remember, this Bible that we're reading wasn't just done uh, off in the middle, in, in midair. It was, it was written, a man in the culture that it was in. Um, and there, there were some things that were based upon how the Romans and the Greeks lived. And we had to look, look at those things. But anyway, look, let me just wrap things up. I do want you to uh, uh, come back and join us at, at 7.30 uh, uh, for the National Baptist Temple Care matters uh call so next week we know once we test these things we got to hold fast what is good hold fast what is good we want to be able to do that on 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 next week and i'm looking up at my calendar and we know that on the 21st 22nd 23rd we'll have our virtual national baptist well hybrid national baptist congress and so we'll be sharing um from that and, and I don't know if we will think about how we do our Bible study, but we may defer to that as well. All right. But look, we hope that you've been blessed on tonight. I have been. Again, thank all y'all for, again, once again, for our love day. Thank you all for your prayers as I've gone through my time of health challenges. And the one thing about it, you always have to um, 
yeah, just, you know, the weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. We just have to make sure that we can stand on God's love and God's promises. All right. Well, look, if you have any uh, prayer requests, we ask you to put those in the, in the chat, comment section on YouTube. Uh, again, I say it all the time, but I just don't want to, I just thank all of you all. Uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me. I look at our YouTube um, uh, video for the Sunday morning uh, a week later, and there's, there's people who've watched it. Our numbers go up on our video on our Facebook, and people uh, tell us how they've been blessed. Uh, thank you all that have seen fit to give to our ministry. I never thought in a million years that I would I, I have a ministry that include uh, social media and video. And so the one thing God has done with this pandemic, I, I didn't know a thing about how to deal with Zoom and none of this stuff before the pandemic, and now I'm doing pretty well with it. And so I want you all to know that we're not going to stop. Each Sunday, we're going to do uh, continue to broadcast because God has blessed us so that we can put more good stuff out here on the airways and all this bad stuff. Look, let's keep everybody lifted up in prayer. Don't forget our theme for the heal for 2022. We are still grateful for a great God. No matter all these things are going on, we're still grateful. If you're breathing right now, be grateful. Now, can I just add something to that? The other week I was in intense pain, but I was still grateful because I was in life. I could have dwelled on the pain and made it a negative and then been down mentally and spiritually, but I just rebuked that pain and just dwelled on the fact that I was alive and, and that this pain was going to be temporary. And I was grateful for God for how he was going to allow this to bless me. And amen. And so no matter what we're going through and setbacks that we have, there's always something, and it's, more than, and it's more than one thing that we can be grateful for. Amen. God bless you. All right. And look, I want you to join us Sunday again on the Hill. We're excited. Homecoming. Uh, it's our graduate recognition, academic achievement. Amen. We begin our, our, our sermons uh, series uh, for Youth and Young Adult Month. Uh, grateful for God's guidance. We're going to deal with Joseph, the arrogant younger brother. Uh, amen. Uh, 945, 945, our sons will be with Minister uh, Willie Beatty, and then we're going to our morning worship at 10. Look, you're going to be blessed. If you can't make it on Sunday uh, in person, you can watch us on YouTube, Zoom, or Facebook. If you can't get us on Sunday, it'll be there. You can watch us the rest of the week, and you will be definitely blessed. Come on, let's go to God in prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much for this time of coming together and study. We thank you for blessing us as we have just talked about uh, what Paul is saying and how that we should test, uh, amen, the, what, the, what uh, is being said, uh, is being shared, and that we need to have uh, the, your word dwelling within us. Lord, we thank you for, this, for all that's transpired this day, whether good, bad, or indifferent. We know that it's all good in you because you're there for us, protecting us and guiding us. We thank you, Lord, for ups and downs insides and outs, everything that happens. But most of all, Lord, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Yes, we thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. But uh, the good news, Lord, is he didn't stay dead. And we're so thankful that on that third day morning, that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And Lord, we're thanking you in advance for those that will hear the words tonight and will come to you accepting your son, Jesus, their savior. And, and those that will come and say they've been helped along the way. Bless right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless this world of ours and our world leaders. Bless our president, Joseph R. Biden, and our vice president, Kamala Harris. Strengthen them on the way. Lord, uh, bless our brothers and sisters uh, over in Ukraine. And Lord, bless all of our leaders, whether they're at the, the governors, the mayors, the council people, our pastors, our ministers, evangelists, teachers of your word everywhere. Bless right now. Lord, especially bless us on the hill. Bless us individually and collectively. Uh, Lord, bless our young people. They are uh, experiencing things that we never had to. So bless right now uh, in the name of Jesus. If it be your holy and divine will. Lord, bless the poor, sick, and afflicted, the bereaved families everywhere. Bless all those names on our prayer list. Lord, we lift a special blessing for the Brown family as they go through this time of, uh, of mourning. We know that, Lord, you won't put more of them than they can bear. Just touch right now 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to go with us every step of the way. Strengthen us, Lord. You know what our needs are, even before we need them ourselves. And then, Lord, continue to go with us, give us strength for the rest of the week, and if be your holy and divine will. Allow us to get to assemble together Sunday, beginning at 945, with our Sunday school overview, followed by morning worship. But, Lord, if we don't uh, 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 meet you uh, on this side, we definitely will look meet you on the other side, there in glory, where we can sing and shout throughout the eternal ages. Lord, we give it all back to you and call it done. Or it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, we thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you on Sunday at 945. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.